Now, though, as Catherine mentioned, we are a little bit behind, so we're going to jump straight over to our next talk, um, which is actually a Q&A with Claire Thornwell, who gave a great talk, I hope you've had the opportunity to watch it, around um, web performance and sustainable web design. So welcome, Claire. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So, um, yeah, what I really loved about your, your, um, your talk was that you kind of presented the data very effectively that it, it's not a pretty picture, but then there was also the, the clear actions that people could take. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's it applies to everything. It's about our behavior. Um, and um, the first thing is to become aware of our behavior. And it, you know, I, I brought the, the example of the tote bag um, and I genuinely thought I was being good for the environment. And then, you know, you start reading things and you're like, oh my God, actually, that's really bad. I need to use my tote bags 10,000, I don't know how many times. Um, and it's, I, I guess it's something that um, for me is one of the biggest things also in UX, it's just awareness. Um, it's missing in so many places, the awareness of what is UX, what, what is it, what is it for and all these things. And I feel like as UX designers, uh, you know, people are constantly trying to justify themselves. And so I guess across the board of what I do, awareness is, is a big topic because it's the same with, um, you know, web performance. The, the... And can I be a little bit of a devil's advocate? Because yes. it's always good to get a bit of friction. If we just got green hosts, does that solve all the problems? And then we don't need to worry about any of the other things with our with our web designs. Um, I would it has it's a, it's a tough one. I mean, it's it's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, I don't think it solves all the problems. Again, you know, that's not us changing our behavior. Um, that's us just saying, okay, it, it's the it's the big easy step because um, we can say, okay, we're gonna go in and change. It's it's like saying, okay, I'm gonna take at home. I've changed my electricity to um, eco electricity, but at the same time, you know, still using the electricity. I switch the light on. I do consciously switch it off when I leave the room. So it's it's kind of like that as well. It's yes, it's a huge step in the right direction, but it doesn't it doesn't solve all our problems. It's the same as carbon offsetting, right? It doesn't solve anything. Just yeah. throwing money at the problem and carbon offsetting just means you haven't changed your behavior, but it makes it okay. <laughs> and a lot of those carbon offsettings, unfortunately, they're a little dubious in, in yeah. how they're offsetting. Um, but one thing that, and I, I'm going to be honest now, and I don't like it, but people are incentivized by kind of like they'll change behavior based on incentives. And there's, I guess you, I don't know if you've heard of the tragedy of the commons, but if, if every, if there's a commons that everybody can use and nobody has to pay for it, then why should anybody pay for it is the kind of the thinking. So, so the, the comments here would be the environment and you're not, you're not getting in trouble for adding those extra images and you're not seeing the effect of it. So how, when there's not that direct immediate kind of impact of my actions, how can we get people to change their behaviors? Oh, that's, that's a tough one, isn't that? That's a really tough question. <laughs> I mean, I'm on one side, when you, talk, <laughs> um, when you talk about particularly sustainable web, uh, web design, um, web performance is one of those things. It actually has an effect on you know, the speed of your website, which actually brings you down in your ratings for Google, for example. So actually, there is, you are penalized. And um, particularly with um, Core Web Vitals, and there's a huge hype about it at the moment. But, you know, you have to hit a certain quota on certain things for you to actually be higher up in the ranking so you actually are I guess from a business perspective you are incentivized to do better and have a better web performance on the other side it's it's a tough one isn't it um, I mean particularly when you're talking about the environment I think half the world don't believe that you know it's such a problem um, and half the world believe um, well it doesn't affect me um, and it's 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 a really tough one. I think it's, you know, one step at a time. Um, I, I'm learning myself. Um, you know, I, I sort of mentioned in my talk, I, I started making my own you know, shampoo and conditioner bars because I was like, okay, that's a little less plastic and a little less plastic bottles. 
And then I'm thinking, you know, it doesn't make sense to sell it because that also raises awareness and all these things. So it's, it's more, everybody has to change their behavior a little bit. And if everyone changes it a little bit, then we're one step further. And it's the same with, you know, the emails and what I was discussing in my talk is, you know, if we all send one email less, it would make a difference. And at the end of the day, the carbon emission of one email doesn't make a huge difference, right? But it's the fact that 4 billion people are probably using their emails almost on a daily basis. If we just used it a little bit less than a little bit more efficiently, then that would make a difference. And that's my point. That's why I'm here. I just I want to raise the awareness. I'm not an expert in this field myself. I only recently learned about it because I'm now in the role of a web performance consultant. And I just want to share that story and raise awareness as well, particularly also in the UX field, because we have the responsibility to also design and, and, you know, it was interesting to hear, you know, the topic of like human centered design. And I actually believe when I read something the other day and I was like, wow, that's a good point, but surely it should be humanity centered design. Yeah, no, there's a, it was a great talk. I um, can't remember what it was, but it's, she, she used the examples of like Uber is great, but it's causing huge amounts of traffic and increasing the amount of pollution. So like you have yeah. to think about the ecosystem the, impacts of, of changes as well. Yeah, I read an article just recently about inverse personas. So we all think about the personas that we're designing for, but actually what we're not designing for is how people can abuse that system. So it's good to also sit down and, and make a persona for the evil person the who evil might person. abuse it and use it incorrectly. <laughs> and it makes sense because, you know, there's so many examples of, I, th I, I would say maybe an e-cigarette is a really good example of, they went from tobacco to e-cigarettes, which are better for your, your, your health, I think. I'm not an expert in that either. But what happened was then it, there was a huge craze for teenagers and then there was a huge problem with that and that's something that they didn't think about when they were designing for it and I think that's what we have the responsibility to do when we're designing and defining and, and researching all these things is really thinking about okay what we have our users we know what we need for our users but you know what how do we design to avoid I guess I would call them anti-users <laughs> and to avoid any problems. One thing, just coming back to the kind of web performance bit, um, how can we make that a lot more, because people forget and they like, so if we could make that really visible or like that kind of just constant reminders to build those habits. And um, so what, what techniques or approaches do you use for that? Um, it's an interesting question. We, we had a talk yesterday um, at work because we, I now have created a, a tiny little new department for web performance and um, we were talking to people you know who are making the big decisions in the company and they were saying and it was an interesting thing that they said is very often web performance is actually from a technical perspective and it isn't actually presented as a business perspective very often and so very often it's just oh yeah yeah the devs will do that oh yeah yeah the devs will do that and they'll you know they'll put an asynchronous loading in there and and make sure that the header is fine and there isn't too much web fonts here and whatsoever but again it's it's awareness so we're trying to push it in our company to actually as a ux perspective and as a marketing perspective because it really matters you know if you want to have all these wonderful pictures but is there really really a point to it so we're trying to get in now with our clients as well to really make them think and say, okay, but this has an effect on your web performance. And the nice thing about web performance is it's actually one of those things that you can almost put, a, put the yeah. data on and monetize. So if your website is one second slower and depending on your you know, company's turnover, we calculated if your company's turnover is, I think, above a million, then you... If it's one second faster, you could be saving yourself 150,000 euros. You know, like it's it's one of those things where we can say, okay, we can we can make you money or save you a huge amount of money. And it's I think with UX, very often it's it's quite subjective because your users always have opinions. And yes, you can gather data on that, but web performance is one of those things. It's like okay, well, you will go down in the ranking. We will save you X amount of money for one second faster of your website. <laughs> That's awareness raising, really. 
No, that, that's great. Thanks very much for um, the chat. Uh, I really enjoyed the session. So if anybody hasn't seen the session, do check it out. It's available online now. Uh, so thank you, Claire. And thank you for raising thank awareness. You.